Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today in this video we are going to discuss about SDT, SDD, S attributed and L attributed grammar. First we see what is SDT and SDD. SDT means syntax directed translation. SDD means syntax directed definition. So what is the difference between these two? In SDT, every production rule of context free grammar is associated with a semantic action. Whereas here, every production rule is associated with a semantic rule. So by the way, what is the difference between semantic rule and semantic action? Semantic rule we can understand like every production rule against every production rule a logic is written. Whereas semantic action is the actual implementation. A program fragment is attached against a production rule. So this is the difference between SDT and SDD. Now, in a context free grammar, if there is a symbol X, it is characterized by two types of attributes or we can call it as values also. What are those two types of attributes? One is synthesized attribute, another one is inherited attribute. Okay, let us understand what is synthesized and inherited attribute from this given example. Suppose we have a production rule X derives Y is Z. Let me draw this as a parse tree. So how do we draw it as a parse tree? It looks like this. X is at the root. Normally head of the production rule is at the root and the body of the production rule will be appearing as a child nodes. If the value of x is obtained with the help of y and z, look at the arrow mark or the dependency graph. If the value of x is computed from y and z, then we can say that the value or the attribute at x is synthesized. I can write like this. For example, the value at x is stored in the attribute a. Let us consider like that. If it is calculated by applying some function over y and z, then we can say that this a is synthesized attribute. So what is inherited attribute? Suppose we consider the symbol z. If the value at the z, for example, the value, let us call it as c. If the value at z is calculated either from y or from x, then we can call the c as inherited attribute. So these are the two types of attributes associated with the grammar symbol context in the context free grammar. Now let's discuss about s attributed and l attributed SDT. Okay, in s attributed SDT. The entire grammar contains only the synthesized attributes, right? As attributed, I mean, in general, we can say the grammar is attributed grammar. It means a normal grammar, if it is further explained with the help of the attributes, the grammar becomes attributed grammar. Okay, in that, what is S attributed? If it uses only synthesized attributes, it is S attributed. If it uses both synthesized and inherited attributes, it is nothing but L attributed SDT. In general, S attributed SDT can be evaluated using bottom up parsing or as I said already, it can be evaluated in post order traversal manner. Post order traversal. What is post order traversal? Left, right and then the root. Whereas L attributed SGD, SDT can be evaluated in depth first. In depth first also, if there are many child nodes, it is starting from left and then it moves towards the right. In S attributed, semantic actions are placed in the rightmost of the right hand side of the production rule. For example, if you consider this rule, always the semantic actions are kept at the right end of the rightmost production rule. Whereas in case of L attributed STD, it can be placed anywhere else. For example, you let us consider the same production rule. A derives BCD. Then the semantic action can be written here. Or the semantic action can be written here. Or the semantic action can be written at the end also. So it can be written anywhere else. Right, so in S attributed, the semantic action is placed at the rightmost end, whereas in L attributed, it can be placed anywhere in the production rule. 
let's continue seeing the differences okay this is a repetition point as i said s attributed sdt is uh, can be evaluated in post order whereas here it is depth first order that too from left to right okay now we consider one example for s attributed sdt a derives xy is a production rule the value of a is computed by applying some function on x and y then whether this rule is there in s attributed yes i can say because a is the synthesized attribute if a grammar contains only the synthesized attribute it becomes s attributed so how do i say it is synthesized because the value of a is obtained from x and y right so that is why we call this rule is a part of s attributed sdt if every rule in the grammar is obtained in the same way we can say the entire grammar is s attributed sdt now let us see what is l attributed sdt consider this production rule a derives x y z right so at the node a or at the grammar symbol a its attribute the small a is calculated from x y and z it means this a is synthesized attribute let me write it in short s y n synthesized attribute okay come to the next rule y dot b is equal to f of x so the attribute or the value at the grammar symbol y is calculated from x in the sense the value at y is calculated from the left sibling that is a case b is an inherited attribute now come to the third rule z dot c the attribute at z is calculated from x and y so the value at the z is calculated from the two of the left siblings which is x and y by the way c is also inherited attribute in this case all these rules says this production rule is a part of l attributed sdt because it contains both synthesized and inherited attribute and one more important point i have to emphasize here when a grammar symbol is inheriting the attribute it should always inherit the values from the left sibling not from the right sibling for example suppose let us consider the the grammar symbol x at the grammar symbol x we take that it is calculating the value of x or the attribute name is x x dot x if we are computing from y and z this is not the part of l attributed sdt why because x is available here its attribute value is calculated from the right sibling that right sibling is not possible in case of l attributed sdt always the inherited attribute or the inherited value is calculated from the left grammar symbol that is why the name of the std itself is l attributed std so i hope you have understood this one more last point i want to say that this is something look, looking like a venn diagram right inside i will write yes outside circle let me write yes l this s is nothing but s attributed s t t whereas this l as you guess it is nothing but l attributed s t t so what is the meaning of this venn diagram this s attributed s d t is the subset of l attributed s t t so if any grammar is s attributed we can call it as l attributed also why we are calling like that because l attributed uses both the types of attributes synthesized attribute as well as inherited attribute that is why if an grammar belongs to the class of s attributed sdt we can classify it as l attributed sdt also so every s attributed sdt is l attributed sdt but not vice versa let me write it here every s attributed sdt is l attributed sdt
but not vice versa i hope you have understood all these concepts uh, please share your the, these videos with your friends also ask them to subscribe to my channel thank you students